I'm trying to think of a lumberjack pun that'll fit with this video, and I don't think there is one. That's it. That's my intro. Hey, I'm Mandy watching Swan Entertainment, and today we are talking about the Lumberjack World Championships that took place in Hayward, Wisconsin this past weekend. Now, I've actually been trying to go to the Lumberjack World Championships or any form of Lumberjack competition. I'm sorry, timber competitions, timber sports. About two years now, okay? Uh, the problem is, is that like most things is that because my schedule is so ridiculous, I forget the myriad of things that I want to do throughout the year until I start seeing the videos on TikTok or Twitter. And then I'm like, Missed it again. Three weeks ago, when I was in San Francisco during a live stream, I had a brain blast when talking about like, oh, upcoming events and things like that. I was like, wait, I should check when the Lumberjack World Championships are. So I Googled it and sure enough, three weeks out. That's, that's how you know I was meant to be here. <laughs> now, as you can tell, I am back home in LA. Normally when I'm traveling for an event, I like to film day of. However, as you will see, we had a little bit of a weather issue. So I ended up getting back a little later than planned on the final day before I flew out. Also, I tried filming one brand deal in my motel room and it did look like a hostage video. Now it is 98 degrees in LA, but one of you replied to my tweet about being at the Lumberjack World Championships uh, saying that if I wasn't wearing flannel in the video, you would be disappointed. So I'm wearing this over my sundress because again, it is 98 degrees here, <laughs> but we're gonna power through. So I actually ended up flying into Minneapolis and then driving into Hayward. Uh, it's about three hours, uh, two and a half, give or take. Um, it feels longer when you're doing it at two in the morning, you know, when I flew home, um, but very beautiful. Wisconsin is stunning. It's always fun for me as a born and raised Californian to go and see like what actual trees and things look like. Um, sorry, born and raised Southern Californian. Um, we do have trees here. They're just of the palm variety or they are there to decorate a golf course. Um, that is really what we have down here. But to see actual forests where I'm like, there is definitely a body out there. That's fun for me to the point where it's like, oh yeah, we have tree chopping competitions where we even chop down these trees so that they can then chop them further. That's fun. That's, that's different. I'm not used to that. They have reserved seating options and general admissions options. There are two bleachers that are general admission. Um, I believe it's like, 25 to 35 bucks. It was very reasonable. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, my reserve seat, I had one right in front of the chopping and sawing dock uh, for uh, different seats each day, just because of when I ended up booking my seats. But to be right in front of the action uh, all days, it was about 44 bucks for Thursday and Friday. And Saturday, it was $54, I believe. And that was pretty far over, but still very reasonable for a reserve seat for uh, an all day event like this. All right, here we are. Doesn't open for another hour, but. So there's an amateur competition going on right now, I think, till 11.30. And then that's when doors open, so I'm just heading over here to be in position. They just said three, two, one, go. I would love to see that. It's always a bummer to me when they like have like the amateur stuff first. It's like people would be inside if you let them. So the way that these work is that in the morning, doors open at like 11.30, okay? And then they have amateur stuff before then. So they just have amateurs going and doing log rolling and chopping and things like that in the morning that we're not there for, okay? Which I'm always bummed by, but I get it. You know, amateurs just wanting to amateur, you know, things like that, I get it. But also I want to, people would come out and support and watch, you know, I, I feel like, especially in there, there were people there that I met this weekend or like I overheard who were just there for like a girl's trip or something, or like just for a weekend trip. And they were like, what's there to do? Oh, the lumberjack world championships. Okay. Let's go for a day. You know, there was a lot of that happening. So I feel like, yes, people came from all over the world. We'll go through some of the different athletes and where they're from. Um, but, uh, just a lot of attendees from all over the place. Um, as far as like state side, I was definitely not the only Californian. I want to make that clear, but, uh, there were people that did think it was very funny that I was from California. One family, uh, the dad kept being like, not like California, is it? Whenever <laughs> he would pass me, which was very funny, not mean or anything like that. I just thought it was funny. My point bringing that up is that for a lot of people that were there just for the day, they would have come first thing in the morning to come for the full day. The first, I think, 
think 100 kids get a, a blow up act, which is super sweet. Around 11.30 is when they would start having qualifying sessions. Now, Thursday, there was a lot more of these. Friday, I had some work to get done in the morning, so I came a little closer to the intermission time, which is around three. That's like the happy hour time from three to 5.30, because the actual event itself, each day starts at 5.30. But there's stuff throughout the day. The grounds are open throughout the day. They have a bunch of different food options. They had, you know, the gift shop. Obviously, they had a couple of different sponsors and things like that. The U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force were there. Uh, they had a company that just builds like log cabin saunas. They were just building one from scratch there. And then also having people that like speed carved bears out of stumps with chainsaws. That's awesome. But throughout the day, there are things to see and do. And there was pretty much always something happening on the chopping or sawing dock or across the bay. Cause we're, okay, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the Lumberjack World Championship is actually like a place on the map. Like each day I would type in Lumberjack World Championship and it would bring me here versus which is the Lumberjack Bowl. That's the official title of like where this space is. And it is a part of the lake that comes in and it's almost like a cold. <laughs> I don't know lake terms. It's been a while. It's like a cul-de-sac of water. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. Uh, they called it the bay across the bay as they kept saying it. This is where the main bleachers were. And this is where uh, the chopping and sawing dock would be. And then the water, obviously. And they on the other side is where they would have the log rolling do uh, dock, basically, where they would push people out on the red dock or the blue dock. And they would do the log rolling runs and things like that. And next to that and another grandstand on that side of the water uh, on the land. And then off to the side is where they would have the 60 foot and the 90 foot pole climbs. And then they had the cool zone at the end down here, which was really cool. Okay. And by cool, I mean, temperature wise, it was sponsored by ice rink tech, rink tech or something like that. And it was wooden bleachers. Side note, I will stand by the fact that wooden bleachers are more comfortable to sit on for long periods of times than metal bleachers. Okay. As someone who does this professionally sits on bleachers, wood is better. Okay. These ones were fantastic because they had a deeper foot pocket. So your legs weren't like cramped at a weird angle and I'm short. So like this was fantastic for me. They were sponsored by a rink spot, but because of where it was, it was pretty much always in the shade or blocking the sun's direct ray. But then also with how low it was and on top of the fact that it was on top of grass versus pavement, like the other grandstands, the breeze coming off the water, it was genuinely like 15 degrees cooler in this grandstand. Fantastic. I would eat my lunch there. Frankly, it was wonderful. But then also between these two jobs, okay, in the water is where they would do the boom runs, the log booms, which is where they have the logs all connected via ropes and or um, carabiners, okay, is what it looked like. Um, and people would run across those. I'm gonna be honest, I am one of those delusional people that has the bisexual audacity that will just straight up be like, I could do this if trying. I, I wouldn't be horrible, but I wouldn't be the best, you know, but I could probably do this. The boom run, I would be going for a swim. I know for a fact I could not do it. I think the log run as well. I don't think I could do. Delusionally, I do think I could do the 60 foot climb. I don't know why. I don't have upper body strength, really. So I don't know if I could do really any of this, but I would try. I would try. But yeah, so they would do qualifying events throughout the day. And this was really good as well uh, for the qualifying events because it was good for me to really, as someone who has like no knowledge aside from like, oh, you can chop wood and stuff. And obviously doing the angles and things like that. I'm gonna butcher the terms. Um, it was very cool to see the qualifying events before the actual events started because I had a better understanding of what each heat was, what each challenge was, what was required basically for both the lumberjacks and the lumberjills. And I could see the difference throughout the day and then to the time teeth. And everyone, the qualifying, obviously it's qualifying. There's no really practice rounds. They are going full out the entire time. So if you want just a one day experience and getting a full day of watching timber sports, then yes, this is going for one day. You probably could fully get it. You won't see who wins the overall championships, but you'll see that on social media after the fact. So very cool, very uh, in depth and it was great. Okay. Also side note, they had the greatest, the greatest. I almost made a fan cam of this man, the greatest announcer I think I've ever seen, especially at a sporting event, in a way that he was both being very educational, very well-spoken, in a way that was both understanding for me as a layman and then people who were probably very familiar with timber sports. Fantastic. Shout out John Hughes. Okay, he's from New Zealand. Okay, they kept calling him the Mad Kiwi. He was fantastic. He wasn't just great, okay, because he would explain, this is what we're going to do. Here is the history of lumberjacks and why we are having them do this as a timber sport. Like, fan 
fantastic, wonderful. He also corrected the first day. I don't know if this uh, announcer was there the rest of the time. He seemed newer. He corrected him a few times because there were very clear like factual errors that he would say that were like numbers related that would confuse the audience. So for example, during the hot sock, which is insane by the way, this announcer at one point uh, said that it was six feet that they had uh, available of the log to chop and he had to correct him. It's like, actually it's six inches. And this is the instance where it's like, yeah, the correction is required because six feet to get three discs is too much space, frankly. Uh, what type of disc are you going to get? Six inches is much more challenging, but also makes much more sense as to why they're being so focused and trying to get those complete discs out of that six. Six inches, okay. He was, I think, the official announcer for the chopping and sawing doc is how they kept referring to him throughout the time. Fantastic, great job. All in all, very entertaining. I, I think I've been seeing far too many announcers, especially lately when I go to some more... Um, not obscure sporting events, but just, they weren't bad, I just couldn't hear them ever. Uh, like Sail GP, I could barely hear the announcers, but like I didn't find them too compelling. Or uh, as we talked about with Formula E, the announcers that were just kind of like, their job is not to be an announcer or they don't MC or anything like that, or they don't commentate whatsoever. And so you just give them a mic because they are well known. And then it's like, ah, uh, yes, you don't know what you're talking about. This is painful to watch. So to have someone like John, who is not only well-versed in the sports, uh, has competed himself, but then also is just incredibly compelling and charismatic on the mic. Fantastic. Good job. I hope you do this for the rest of your life, John. This is great. Several events throughout the day that they just kept running through in different heats. Pretty much all of the Lumberjacks and Lumberjills would do both. The one thing that did not have any Jills participate in uh, unless I missed it, was the 60 and 90 foot climbs, the springboard chop, and the hot saw. The hot saw was only a set group of people, and then pretty much everything else, the boom run, standing chop, the underhand chop, the misery whip, they called it, the, the big saw. Buck saw? No. Yes? The Jills did everything else. It was fantastic, wonderful, okay? And this is where, this is what's super cool about a lot of timber sports that I found. Obviously, everyone has just the most insane fucking arm muscles you've ever seen in your life. I do think there is something very, interesting. I, I want to see more breakdown. I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there somewhere. I'm going to have to find it. Um, I'm sure there are videos about like the science behind like muscles from like, it sounds weird, labor versus muscles from the gym, you know? And so I'm so curious about the difference between like muscle building and like muscle strength and the variety of muscle strength gotten from like day-to-day -day hard labor and, and like manual labor versus like actually like going on a very strict like muscle training regimen and things like that and the variety of that. Um, and I think this is a very good example of that because just of the variety of like body types and things like that that were on display throughout the Lumberjack World Championships. And then also there would be times where I was like, oh, this guy's gonna kill it because his arm muscles are insane. But then he wouldn't be able to either maintain the speed, he was too focused on actually being accurate with the chops, um, could not get switched fast enough, uh, too focused on over uh, choking up on the ax and all this stuff, or or like someone who was, uh, you know, that you may think would be slower because they were larger would actually be much more, have much more uh, power throughout their whole body for the underhand chop and things like that. Very cool, fantastic. Made it very difficult for me to predict who was gonna be first, <laughs> which is very fun. I did not bet on this whatsoever. I did not make an internal bet with myself. I was like, oh, I'm thinking they're gonna, I was literally just screaming and cheering for everyone. Uh, and then internally I'd be like, they're gonna do it. And then they wouldn't. <laughs> there is a program, I'll go grab it. So it's a little smushed from being in my pack and a little waterlogged from the storm. This is great because it goes through all of the different, I was right, it was the buck saw. It goes through all of the different, like the history of the Lumberjacks, World Championships. It goes through the actual competitions itself. Thursday was the quarterfinal competition, semifinal competition, and then the World Championship competition. So there were quite a few people who did not go the other days and then only went on Saturday, or there were people who went on the other days and didn't go on Saturday because they got what they wanted. I ran up the stairs, okay. <laughs> I can do the 60 foot <laughs> They also have all the names of all the competitors with their competitor number, with their bib number. They have little bios of everyone. They also have uh, breakdowns for what each competition is, which is very cool. It's also riddled with ads. I am pro that. Whatever gets you to pay for things to keep costs low, Take all the ads. There's someone who uh, is just like a local doctor, a local surgeon. He sponsors one of the climbing poles. Like he literally has like blank MD, whatever works. You know, I'm cool with that. That was very funny because also hearing he specializes in hip, shoulder and uh, joint surgery. And I was like, yeah, this is definitely, this is where you're gonna get those injuries. Yeah, Dr. Brent Carlson. 
fun. The standing block chop is the one that I definitely got the most entertainment out of because this one is probably the one that has the most like wood chips flying. So the men do a 14 in diameter log, the women do a 10 inch diameter. They were also using white pine this year, which I thought was interesting. Apparently they haven't used white pine before. They've used other uh, types of wood before. Um, I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, but something that was interesting about the white pine is that it's very sap heavy, apparently. They only really brought it up for the buck saw competitions. Basically because it's sap heavy, it actually can make the wood get, the, the ax, the blade get stuck. So for the buck saw, that's very, very obvious, obviously, because you're cutting down. So you're actually going in between the wood. So you obviously are coating the blade in axe and in, in axe in sap. Wow, the entire time so that can make it stick and slow down. But I wonder how much that I don't know. I guess with the angle of the axe, it wouldn't be doing that for regular standard axes. But I, I can't imagine that it doesn't affect you know, the, the format or the, the way the wood sticks together, clings together because of the act, the sap content would be want to know more. I'm asking about sap physics basically, but this one was very fun. Basically they have to chop through both sides of the wood by going at an angle and then swapping sides. And then you try to get as clear as a cut just to make the top tumble off. And then they would have the judges come around. Once their uh, top tumbled off, they could not touch it any further. They could reclose their ax, but they could not touch the log whatsoever, which is interesting because in some instances, this would be very aggressive, obviously once the top got off and a lot of people would start on one end and flip the other. So a lot of times the top would tumble off into the water and it would just kind of be floating in the bay for a little bit. So I wondered how that would affect any of the judging whatsoever. No one that I saw really got disqualified from this uh, section. Um, I would be interested because they close up their axe really quickly. Has anyone ever cheated? That was something that I don't think I really ever got answered. Do they check the axes, the competitors' axes, throughout the competition regularly before their competition, like their challenges? Uh, because they all have their own axes, okay? And they also uh, all have their own covers, which is very fun. No one really bedazzled. You guys could bedazzle something. You guys could stick a bow on something. It would be fine. It's fine not. Some people had pink, some people had purple, some people had a variety of just like browns and things like that. Um, it would be really funny to see like the very high tech ones that are like a little more uh, like, like like plastic bits and things in them and all that stuff. That was be interesting. Uh, but does anyone cheat? I understand like the way to cheat here would be just to probably dope. That would probably be the easiest way to cheat here. Like obviously if you have um, more arm strength, less fatigue, things like that. Uh, but I feel like there's a way to cheat with the axes. Not to say that I ever would, but I'm just, I'm fascinated by sports cheating and things like that. So I'm wondering if there was a way that you could cheat here and how they do present uh, prevent that. I don't think I ever heard them discuss that at all all weekend. The underhand chop, also insane. This is where uh, lumberjacks would have to break up logs that had already fallen uh, to into manageable pieces so they could move them. They are standing on literally like two foot grooves that are carved into the, uh, like axed into the, the, the logs. And they're standing on top of that and they're doing the same motion of cutting out the triangles and then flipping sides and doing it the other side. And I thought this would be easier because gravity is bringing the ax down, you know, and you're not having to um, like switch sides as much, you know, it's, but you're literally like crunching downwards and you're, it's your whole body because you got to swing up to get the full force. So I feel like this was much more uh, fatiguing. Oh, the master's underhand chop is very fun. This was cool because they would give them handicaps. So if you won last year, you would be given a five second handicap start or a couple seconds, okay? So they would start the count Whoever started on zero would start on zero. And then one guy started on 15 seconds and still won. And this is the over 50 division for the master's division. So you'd be over 50 with a handicap. That was truly insane because just God, that was good. Uh, the, without fail, at least for Saturday or for Thursday and Friday, uh, whoever had the longest handicap for the most part won, which is crazy because now that means they have to have another handicap for next year. Insane. The buck saw, as they call it, the misery whip. This is where I think, uh, when you think of like cartoon lumberjack, when you think of Looney Tunes, you think of the long, goofy, long, like wiggly saw. That's like a sheet metal saw, basically. Uh, that's what this is. Okay. So they have the single one and the double one. So obviously single is one person, double is two people. Gotcha. Uh, so they would do masters, J uh, Jill and Jill, men's double buck saw. See, why do you call it the Jill and Jill double buck saw and not just the women's double buck saw? Hmm. 
Jill and Jill versus the men's double box sock. Just curious. I, I'm kidding. I'm nitpicking. But yeah, this one was crazy. Some crazy times uh, for the doubles. It would be, yeah, 6.89 seconds for last year's championships for the men's double box. For Jack and Jill, 8.31. Truly crazy. And like I said, they the sap here would be sucking up to the, uh, the saw itself. So they would have someone basically either sitting on the log or next to the log, just drenching it in WD-40 the entire time. And they would cover in WD-40 beforehand. And then they would also have a dowel of sorts to like make sure that it would pop off immediately uh, that you could get in there to help get the gap a little thicker. Springboard chop. They are standing in front of a nine foot pole. On top of it is a log they have to chop. But to get there, they have to chop divots into the pole enough to fit a springboard, a board into that spot, stand on it, pack in another spot to put in another board and then keep going. Okay, until they got to the top and then they do a standing block chop. Insane. What was very gimmicky and funny though, I will say, is that once they got to the top, they couldn't just come down. They would wait until someone else finished, all of them finished. Sometimes it'd be like three dudes just kind of sitting there with their axes out of breath. And then one guy still wailing. Because without fail, there would usually be someone who took a little longer. By the time we got to the actual finals, there, there was usually not a lot of time left after the qualifying, but sometimes there would be someone who was taking an extra 10, 15 seconds. Um, what was really nice is that they made a big deal about us cheering as loud as possible for whoever was left. Uh, so, and they would always be like, pick your favorite and cheer them on regularly. Very nice. Uh, uh, no one, no one booed at all. <laughs> I want to say that it sounds stupid when I know no booing, but I, I feel like with a sporting event, especially with competitions like this, when there's a lot of like hometown favorites and things like that, a lot of people's personal family in the crowds, booing for other people does tend to happen. The fact that there was no booing, very nice. And then the hot saw, which they warned us throughout the day. This one I got excited for. These are chainsaws with snowmobile motors in them. Me with my motorsport brain rot, I was excited. So I got my loop earbuds. They still don't sponsor me, but I still use them. This would end the uh, qualifying and then would also kick off the actual start of the events at 5.30. Why? Because these have the most safety equipment involved. They would have boards literally bolted down to the deck, uh, I believe for the oil and things like that, that would come off the chain because they had to have a ton of oil in the chains. And then also they had uh, screens that were protective screens in case something flew off. It didn't fly off into the crowd or fly off into another competitor. And they also had to attach their uh, starting cords to the deck because it is a throw away starting cord and they didn't want that going into the water disappearing into the deck going onto another person's chop block so they would secure it to the deck so that they threw it it didn't go far truly insane but basically this is where they had to get the three discs and three full discs okay could not have any disqualification because the disc was incomplete and i mean like if there was like a skinny disc on one end that's not a complete disc had to have three with six inches only, six inches of space only. And there was at least one disqualification because he nicked the mark line. Crazy, 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 loud, fast, fun. Women's log rolling, men's log rolling, insane. So this is a uh, best three of five. So if you get three knocks off out of five, whoever stays on the longest wins or without falling in the most wins. And this was one that where they would pretty much always have it going on to the other side because there was more log rollers than I would say there were other choppers. The boom run, like I said, truly insane. I would be in the water. There were a couple of instances like the start of the boom run. I was always intrigued by this because it's like there would be times where it would start and the logs would be dry on top because of how hot it was. It was a bajillion degrees outside. Not as bad as it is here, but the humidity was pretty bad, obviously, because there's just more water and such in the air and where there's green. Would you believe that versus the desert? <laughs> it's a dry heat out here. So it's just death. There would be times where the top of the log would be drier. And then they are also wearing cleats that they file down the plastic bits and then they put logger bits on them, I believe is what they said. That was interesting because they did that for the log rod as well, obviously to keep your feet there. So that's where you would see the uh, the logs would have uh, like grooves throughout them that look like termite holes basically because it's from their cleats running on them. But I would wonder if it was actually better or worse to be running on a completely dry log because logically in my brain, I would think yes. But then because of the cleats, I would think no, because I feel like wouldn't you want to be able to have a bit more give in the logs from the water soaking in for that your cleats to grab onto. So I don't know. Would be interesting. I never really got an answer to that. The ax throw, that was only the final day as far as I could tell. I don't know if they ever did that any other days, but that was crazy. It was based off of, you know, throwing an ax. And they would do that literally right on the middle of the chopping and sawing dock, which is why I know that I don't think they did it the rest of the time. Um, and they would put the bullseye. They would have a net behind it. There was no net behind them though. So I think we just kind of all hoped that they wouldn't take someone out in the crowd by 
losing the axe head. Very interesting. Uh, something as simple as if you get your axe blade in bullseye, it would de it wouldn't count if the other side of the axe, because it was the double axe. I don't like throwing axes. You know, they look different than like regular axes. If the one blade was in, you couldn't have the other blade touching. So like if it was like at an angle, but then the top of the other blade was touching, disqualification. The relay race, this is how they finished every single day crazy intense and this would be a 60 foot speed climb and then it would be a woman's boom run then a men's boom run then a man's underhead and chop woman buxar and then a man standing chop to end it without fail it would usually be one to two chops off of who would lose by the time they were done to it. That's crazy, okay? Bummed I missed the last one. Uh, let's talk about Saturday, okay? Uh, because each day it was just, uh, God, so hot. And it was crazy with how bad the heat would get because Thursday was pretty overcast because it was raining off and on, very light rain. But Friday, there was no overcast whatsoever really so it was just a bajillion degrees so during intermission during the happy hour it cleared out there was like no one there by the time i got there it did fill up again uh because once the sun starts going down it does get a little cooler um it's much more bearable but it was pretty bad <laughs> um and then saturday also pretty hot throughout the day um and i didn't know it was supposed to rain on saturday because i did have a raincoat i did not bring it <laughs> but the weather changed very quickly Saturday. So they started the events. All right, they did the axe throwing. They did the hot saw. They did a couple of things. And I knew a storm was coming in because like they say, it does affect your body. My sinuses that had been open all weekend decided that right then my nose was going to become all swollen and stuffed up. Could not breathe through my nose. I got a pressure headache at like the base of my skull. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> That's not good. The The wind changed very quickly. The sky changed very quickly to the point that I was like, I should start filming the sky just in case. It was very quick, the change. It was like, people are chilling. We're all watching. The announcers are still going. Then people start fleeing the grandstands, really like, okay, kids, let's get to the car. Let's go. And then it's like, we're going to keep going until we decide we can't. Actually, we're going to have a 15 minute delay. I get off the grandstands with everyone else and I get underneath the grandstands, not touching anything because metal, lightning, etc. The rain starts. It gets very heavy. The grandstands do not have a lot of leakage, but it's fine. There's a lot of people under there with me. The beer garden, the swinging axe beer garden, that was very crowded. So I was like, I don't want to go over there. So I just stayed over there. The rain then picked up very severely, it kept going. And every time there was lightning, they would add another 15 minute delay. Understandable because it's like, hey, we can't have you on the metal grandstands. We can't have you on a open flat dock on the water for chopping and holding things that I don't know if it would be a holding a metal thing, but it's just for safety purposes. Uh, and there were instances where the dock crew would be out there as well. And they were like, hey, we need to get you off of there just to be safe. Like we can't have you prepping things. My question here as well, it's like, could you really have feasibly restarted after this because of how wet the logs and everything became? Does that not affect anything? Uh, cause they, some of the logs had been covered. Most of the ones that were already set up were not, everything was soaked. So would that not affect people's times and things like that? There was a point where it was just, it would, the sky was looking away. The wind was looking away. Everyone was acting in a way where I started Googling, does Wisconsin get tornadoes? The answer is yes. They get about 26 a year and, uh, it's usually ends their, their tornado watch season ends in August. This was August 3rd. I didn't want a tornado, but I also kind of was like, God, a, I was in a tornado so you don't have to. Video would have gone done so good after Twisters. <laughs> there was no tornado. Um, I did stay uh, till they kicked us out, really. Um, I did end up moving under the beer garden. Uh, a lot of people had cleared out. I would say a good, there was probably maybe 60, 70 of us left at the end. Uh, they were trying to make it happen, but every time there was lightning, obviously they had another 15 minute delay and there were no lights that I could see inside the lumberjack bowl. So they said by 815 if we can't get restarted we're not going to get restarted because they have to pay out the athletes there is prize money and people come from all over the world like i said so there were people from australia uh new zealand uh ireland for the first time japan okay uh i think there were some canadians people had flights to get home and so they were trying to make sure that the ones that they had to do so like the relay probably would have been canceled any of the masters competitions i don't know if those would have been canceled but a lot of the ones that were really contributing to the championship that would lead to uh, people getting their payouts. They were like, we're going to try and get those done. But obviously because of that, they couldn't. So they just basically called all the athletes into the athlete 10 and said, Hey, we're going to start at eight in the morning. We're going to start at 9am, which is what they did. They did say, Hey, we're gates are going to be open at 9am free admission. If you don't have anyone that has a ticket, don't worry. Everyone's allowed in. 
I had a flight to get home to, so I did not stay. I could have moved my flight, but considering there was supposed to be rain again on Monday, I didn't want to risk it because I do have a dog and I do have other events to get back to. So I did end up coming home. And so I was not there for the final day on Sunday. Is what it is. Sometimes if I can plan accordingly, I can make that happen. I did not plan accordingly this time. And I already had to drive three hours to get back to the airport. So it was just not going to work out. Luckily they did update throughout the day on Instagram who was winning. So I can tell you that the winners from last year are the winners who won again this year. Okay, as far as the uh, all around champion for the women's and the men's. But that's why I'm titling this probably Storm Down out of Lumberjack World Championship because I was stormed out. I didn't storm out. I was stormed out. Oh God, is that the pun? Is that the best I can do? Really? <laughs> as far as everything else goes, they had musical acts going on throughout the day in the beer uh, swinging beer garden. They advertised that really well as well. It's like, oh, tomorrow this is who's performing, things like that. Also in this, I did start a sub stack. That sounds super random, I know, but I did start a sports sub stack called Spectator. Uh, it will be linked down below. I just want another place to yap about sports in a written form. There will be at minimum two posts a month. Uh, it's a paid sub stack, but there will also be unpaid posts and things like that that are free. So the my review of the first day of the Lumberjack World Championships is already up. There's a couple of other timber sports events that are like all over the world, it sounds like. So very cool. A bunch of these people that competed uh, in the Lumberjack World Championship are actually medaled in other tournaments and other championships around the world, which is very cool. Have you ever been to a timber sports event or the Lumberjack World Championship? Let me know. Are you one of those people that when you heard I was, was in Wisconsin said either welcome or why are you here? Good luck. <laughs> Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I stream on Twitch. Reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder to check out Spectator and reminder to use code Swell for 10% off on Gamer Subs. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. Hi, I'm making the switch over to YouTube memberships. Click the join button down below. I'm on social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to have a lovely day. Goodbye. had an excellent time. That's that's the best I can come up with. I'm sorry. I'm I'm slacking. I'm I'm tired. I'm sorry. Thank you, Adira, Amy, Andrew, Ayana, Cameron, Donnie, Elliot, Freya, Jeffrey, Jenny, Literal, May West, Michael, Nathan, Oz, Palace, Qwerty, Robert, Tasha, Tenzin, Thomas, Timothy, Winters, Wink.